I'm sure most of you recognise this. This is the collet chuck that I bought for my mill in order to hold end mills. The collet chuck was just a no name purchase from eBay. The chuck plus 18 collets, that's 1 to 20 mils of range, and the carry case sent me back around 80 Australian bucks, maybe 50 US. And visually, and in the limited experience I've had so far, I'm pretty impressed with the quality. It's not perfect, but considering that you can shell out hundreds of dollars for these sets, I'm pretty happy with what I got. One thing that I did mention in the mill video is that my mill and my lathe use the same Morse 3 taper. So in theory, I should be able to mount the chuck in my lathe spindle, and I'll have myself an ER32 collet chuck. Before I can do that though, I do need to make up a drawbar to keep the collet chuck tightly seated in the lathe spindle. Well so far it looks pretty promising. The cold rolled steel that I bought turned out to not be perfectly circular, but I was able to work with it. All we need to do now is make up an end cap to seat in the back of the spindle and we should be done. Well, looks pretty good so far. There are two things that are jumping out at me though. Number one is the amount of stick out. Let me quickly measure it. With the nut included, that's about 70 mils worth of stick out, almost 3 inches. That's 20 mils more than my four jaw chuck. That's going to be a lot of torque wanting to push the chuck off center when I'm machining. The second thing that I didn't think of before is we're going to be quite limited in how much work we can actually chuck in terms of overall length. If it's less than 10 millimeter in diameter, we can actually feed 100 mils of stock into the chuck, though anything larger, and we're going to be limited to about 35 mils actually going back into the chuck. Maybe a little bit more than that since the collet sits forward of the chuck a little bit, but it still isn't that much. However, it's not all negativity. This is still a collet chuck, so we should get the advantage of having low run out on our parts. 
Well, hopefully, we will have to test for that. We should also get really good gripping strength on our part. As you tighten the collet, the collet should clamp evenly around the part. The advantage here is that you spread the force over a large area, and in that way, you don't mar the part or actually bite into it. Compare this to a steel chuck jaw, the clamping force is spread over a small area, and this can bite into plastic or soft materials. Anyway, we do need to see how good the run out is, so let's test it. For reference, the run out, or I guess eccentricity, of the taper in the lathe spindle measures at around 8 or so microns, which is pretty good for stock bearings after 2 years, though I do think they will need replacing very soon. The inside 8 degree taper of the collet chuck worryingly shows that the runout has jumped to about 40 microns, and considering that the scroll chuck runs at about 60, this isn't a great improvement. Thankfully for the test that actually matters, the runout wasn't that bad. I used some cobalt jewel rod in the collet, and the runout reads at about 25 to 27 microns. It's not much stick out, since I didn't have that much cobalt jewel rod, but this is all I had. 25 to 27 microns is about half of what the scroll chuck gives you, but remember with the forejaw I can actually dial it to under 10 microns, though setting up parts in that chuck is always a bit of a hassle. Anyway, let's put the test indicator away and let's see how it works as a collet chuck. I'll load up some acrylic and I'm definitely sure that it will hold it well and work as a chuck, but what I'm aiming for is no damage to the surface. Next I'll load up some half inch brass. Finally, I'll machine some mild steel with some carbide. Well, it handled it pretty well. Well, what have we learnt here? Well, number one, import collet chucks do a pretty good job for their price. This one here added about 15 to 20 microns of runout in the setup, and I will be testing that again in the mill spindle to make sure that the runout there is low too, because having large amounts of runout is bad for mill cutters. The second thing that we learnt is that this works well as a lathe chuck. I should have really mentioned before that these are really intended to be used in mills to hold end mills. A proper collet chuck sits on the back plate of the lathe spindle, and it doesn't really require a drawbar, so you can feed in longer pieces of material, but this works fine for short pieces. Third thing that we learn is it's just nice to have options. This is a nice compromise between the scroll chuck and the forgeor independent chuck. You know, a scroll chuck is super convenient to use, but it has poor runout. An independent chuck has good runout, well, at least if you can dial in good runout, but it is really inconvenient to use. The collet chuck, though, fits in the middle. I'm not saying I'm going to be using this in every video, but it is really nice to have this sort of option available to me. And with that, thank you very much for watching.